All right, listen up. I do my best. I well, I try. I try to be I don't know, dip diplomatic. I try to curb myself sometimes or most of the time on here, but someone just posted a comment that just pissed me off. Again, I'm not here to put on some polished cutesy show. I am a proclaim God's heart standards prophetess, just like John the Baptist, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, So if you want some pretty polished, cutesy show, get off my channel. I just blocked somebody because they were shaming me because I came on here and I'm telling the truth about what I'm going through in my journey. Part of my ministry is to share the journey I'm going through. Part of my ministry is to be a living sacrifice. Part of my ministry is to show people that what you read in scripture isn't just some made up stuff. That people, that, that God's people, gotta watch my volume, that God's prophets go through crap. God's prophets go through miserable experiences. Now, if you don't like that reality, get off my channel. But don't be put in comments shaming me. And telling me that basically I'm hurting God's reputation is more or less what this person was saying. Oh, don't, don't, don't expose your vulnerability, April, and, and make our God out to be like he can't, you know, take care of things. No, he can take care of things. And he doesn't need me to manage his reputation, does he? No, he doesn't, because he's the almighty God. just amazes me the, the things that people say if, if you were walking around in the time of Jesus or the time of Jeremiah or Ezekiel would you criticize the way you do would you run your fingers on the keyboard or run your mouth the way you run your fingers on the keyboard I'm going through it right now and to be completely honest I'm losing my freaking mind right now I've been homeless for five and a half consecutive months now and in the last year, this is my second time being homeless. And yeah, it's because I'm following the Lord. I'm picking up my cross and I'm following Jesus. Because I have the ox anointing. Because I am supposed to break up the fa fallow ground, so to speak. Because we're in the tribulation. Housing market's about to crash. The, I mean, just everything's about to crash. People are going to be going through what I'm going through here soon enough regarding survival, struggling, homelessness, etc. Especially if you're anointed. If you're close to the Lord, you're going to be going through crap. And I know a lot of people will argue with that, and I really don't care, but it, it's the truth. We could sit here and argue until Christ returns, but it's the truth. Those who are the closest to the Lord go through crap. Don't come on my channel and shame me for my vulnerability. How dare you? How dare you? Part of my ministry is to show the humanity. To show what we go through as prophets. If you were there when Jeremiah was down in the miry pit, would you be criticizing him that he was hurting God's reputation? When God told Ezekiel that he had to cook his food over excrement and lay on his side and all that crap, would you be criticizing him about how he's hurting God's reputation? Or maybe you're one of those people that likes to criticize John the Baptist when he was sitting in prison before he got his head cut off about how he doubted Jesus. Are you one of those people? It sounds like maybe you are, since you're coming on here and shaming me and criticizing me. I rebuke your criticism in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. I rebuke your shame in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. And you just got blocked.
Do you know what it's like to be homeless for five and a half consecutive months and have zero fellowship besides dealing with people through YouTube? Have no support system, no one but God himself. Do you know what that's like? Do you know what it's like to carry the anointing, to carry the burdens? Do you know what it's like to pick up your cross and follow Christ the, to the level that I am right now? Thought I had something on my screen. I'm not here to put on some cutesy show. Part of my ministry, a large part of my ministry, is to show what it means to be a living sacrifice, as scripture tells us to. To go through it with the Lord. Let me just remind you that the Lord is called the man of sorrows. Was Jesus um, hurting Father God's reputation because he had to pick up his cross literally and go be crucified and when he was mocked and shamed, when people spit on him? It's just... I'm so tired of the criticism. I take it and I take it and I take it and then I get to a point where I just say enough is enough. I am following the Lord right now. He told me to go to this other state. I'm not allowed to even say publicly where I am right now. He keeps promising me that I'm going to have housing, that I'm going to have a husband, that I'm going to have a new vehicle. He's given me a whole bunch of assignments and mandates and responsibilities and yada, yada, yada. And I got to have people coming on here. It's so easy to sit there be behind your keyboard and, and just criticize. Do you have any empathy? Where's your love as a Christian? See, God also uses me as a vessel of judgment, being that I am a proclaim God's heart standards type of prophet. He uses me to convict people. He uses me as a double-edged sword, as his vessel of judgment sometimes with people. Don't come on this channel and criticize and shame me because you're going to get blocked. I, I've just, I've had it with people. I've so had it. And right now, I've got zero tolerance for that kind of crap right now because I am. I'm just getting to a breaking point again. I'm trying to be responsible with the provision that the Lord brings in through donations. And what do I get? I get freaking bed bugs here. I got enough to deal with. I got no one to talk to, no one to cry to, no one to vent to. And when the Lord leads me to come on here and share what I'm going through, that's part of the freaking ministry. To see what it's like to really pick up your cross. To see what it's like to have the anointing. The ox anointing. To be a prophet, etc. Picking up your cross and following Christ is not always ice cream and roses and rainbows. And apparently you're uncomfortable with that truth, with that reality. Well, you better freaking accept it because we're in the tribulation. And those of us who are truly in intimacy with the Lord are going to be going through it. We already are going through it. I'm so sick of these fake Christians, these surface level fake Christians. If you're truly in intimacy with the Lord, then you'll see me for who I am in Christ and you'll see the ministry that he's given me and you'll appreciate it and you'll respect it. If you're truly a Christian, then you'll have some empathy. And this person that I'm talking about, you wrote a whole freaking book in the comments, even though I specifically said that I disabled the comments under my last video because I didn't want to hear anyone's two cents. So what do you do? You go post a comment on another one of my videos and you write a whole freaking book. I didn't even read it. I read it like the first sentence or two. I removed it and I blocked you because I've had enough. You're not going to shame me. 
The Lord did promise me a husband. The Lord did reveal and confirm to me who my husband was about two years ago. And that man did stonewall me. And that is disrespectful of him. And it is aggravating. And I am a human being. And I'm allowed to freaking talk about whatever the hell I want to talk about on my channel. This is the ministry that God gave me. And this is part of what I'm going through right now. And he has told me that I'm allowed to. And he wants me to share the journey that I'm going through. If you don't like that, get off my channel. I am only human, and I am being tested and stretched right now. That's part of the ox anointing, is that I get to go through all the yucky crap before the rest of the body of Christ does. You think it's fun? It's not fun. I'm here to show you guys what it's like, what it really, truly, realistically is like. To serve the Lord, to wait on the Lord, to, to stand on God's promises. And I, I got people patronizing me. Criticizing me, patronizing me. As if I don't know, like, like totally acting as if I'm just like giving up on God or something. What, I'm obviously not. I've been persevering. I've been persevering my whole friggin' life. I'm still persevering. I'm still doing the Lord's work. I'm still serving him. So because I come on here and I'm vulnerable and you don't like that I'm vulnerable, that makes you uncomfortable because you don't have the courage to be vulnerable yourself, most likely is the type of person that you probably are. You're going to criticize me. No, take it elsewhere. The life of a prophet, especially a proclaim God's heart standards type of prophet like, Jer excuse me, like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, John the Baptist, sucks. Okay? It does. It sucks. That's the reality. It's very lonely. And it's very miserable. So no, I'm not going to come on here and only show you guys the good stuff. And, and be all cutesy and, oh, everything's great, guys. Praise the Lord. La, 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 la. You want that? There's a bazillion other freaking channels like that on YouTube. Have at it. I'm here to be real about the real Christian walk, the real walk of a prophet, the real walk of someone who has the ox anointing. It sucks. Serving the Lord, waiting on the Lord sucks quite a bit. It does. We are to deny ourselves, deny our flesh, the Lord makes us wait. The Lord tests us. I am constantly being tested. And your persecution is just one aspect of that. The Lord doesn't need me to protect his reputation. He is who he says he is. He works everything for good. And we can all complain at times. But just because I'm sharing what I'm going through doesn't mean that I'm saying that the Lord is weak or that the Lord doesn't do what he says he's going to do or, or whatever. Sarah waited. How long did Sarah wait for Isaac? What was it, like 20 years or something? That poor woman. <sighs> Waiting on the Lord sucks. Waiting on the Lord is a test. And those of us who are truly intimate with the Lord have been going through crap and will continue to go through crap because we are in the tribulation. Scripture even tells us that this is going to be the worst time ever in the history of humans. We've barely even scratched the surface yet in the, tri in the tribulation. There's going to be all kinds of crap as the Lord keeps telling us. War, starvation, cannibalism, fallen angels, all kinds of crap. And the Lord is preparing me. I asked him twice now whether I should go and try to cancel the rest of my reservation because of the bed bugs. And he told me basically, suck it up. Deal with it. Why? Probably because at some point, at some point, probably because I'm, I'll be dealing with something worse.
I'm here to show you. I'm here with the ox anointing to go ahead of you to show you the process, the psychological process of what it is to <laughs> to enter into the tribulation, to walk the Christian walk, to wait on the Lord, to serve the Lord. It's to build your faith. It's to uh, prepare you psychologically. I was sharing on here how, what was it, a, a day or two ago, the Lord was speaking to me about how I am like John the Baptist. What was John the Baptist's main purpose? It was to prepare the way for the Lord. It was to prepare the people. It was to call people to repentance. And so this person that I'm talking about right now who posted this comment and anyone else like that, I'm calling you to repentance right now. I charge you in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth to have some empathy to stop shaming and criticizing God's anointed for doing what they're called to do. I'm not the only one that the Lord is calling with the ox anointing to go ahead of the rest of the body of Christ right now and suffer. Do you know what suffer means? Suffer means to deny your flesh. I'm not the only one that he has living the way I'm living homeless, in transient lodging. I'm not the only one who's sharing their journey. Now, am I maybe the most raw about it that I've seen on YouTube? Yeah, I've, I've received compliments on that. I had, I had a fellow prophetess back in January tell me that I was the only real one in the Christian community on YouTube. I, and my, my former, my ex-friend, April, um, a year or two ago, however long it was now, she basically said the same thing to me. She said, you're the most genuine Christian I see on YouTube. So you either take it or leave it. You appreciate it and respect it, or you don't. That's between you and God. But I'm not going to tolerate you coming on here and shaming me. God is God. He doesn't need me to protect or manage his reputation. And no, I am not perfect. And I am starting to wrestle with the Lord right now. I am. I'm getting to a breaking point right now. I'm acting out a little bit right now. Last night I went and got some sugary donuts, <laughs> which sounds ridiculous. But it was a little thing of like acting out. Because I'm human. I get to a breaking point. And there's grace for that. Thank God. I'm here to set the norm, the standard of what is normal in the Christian walk. I'm not here to continue this facade that, oh, the Christian walk is easy. The Christian walk is just la-di-da. No, that's not the real true Christian walk. We're to pick up our cross and follow Christ, which means it's going to suck. God doesn't need me to protect or manage his reputation. He's almighty. He is who he says he is. He works everything out for the good. And people like me, I proclaim God's heart standards prophetess, ox anointing, etc. We especially are called to pick up our cross and follow him and be a living sacrifice. We are called especially to suffer and deny ourselves. And I'm only human. I'm only human. So put yourself in my shoes and ask yourself honestly and answer yourself honestly how well you'd be coping if the Lord told you that you're not allowed to work, closed all the doors to jobs, has led you to be homeless, has led you to live completely 100% dependent on him for your income and provision, which, you know, predominantly is through other people obeying him to send donations to you. 
living transiently from motel to hotel to Airbnb to motel to hotel, literally going geographically wherever he tells you. You have no family, no friends, no one to talk to, literally no one to pick up the phone and call and talk to, or even text. All you have is just people through the internet that you can email here and there. Strangers that kind of come and go like a revolving door. That's my life. That's my life right now. So ask yourself honestly and answer yourself honestly. If you were in my shoes right now, how well would you be coping? I'm not saying anything negative about God. Am I starting to wrestle? Am I starting to kind of lose my mind a little? Am I starting to not cope so well anymore? Yeah, I'm human. So if you want to criticize me that I don't have perfect faith and I don't have a perfect walk, well, go look in the mirror because all have fallen short of the glory of God. Go refresh yourself on scripture. Let's see. Elijah begged God to kill him. Jeremiah, was it Jeremiah? Excuse me. Job begged God to kill him. Was it Jeremiah too? I forget. Go read the significant people in the Bible that God held in high esteem. They had their moments where they were losing their mind. They had their moments where they wrestled with God. I'm not coming on here and saying any negative saying anything negative about God. I don't need to do to to manage or protect his reputation. He is who he says he is. He proves himself. It's us that fall short of his glory. I'm here to set the standard to that it's okay for you to not be perfect. That's part of my duty as a prophetess, especially the type of prophetess that I am. Even John the Baptist had a moment where he doubted whether Jesus was the Messiah. So how dare you come on here and shame me? I'm going through a rough week this week, okay? I'm, I'm staying somewhere this week that has bed bugs, which means I'm not really getting peaceful sleep because every little sensation on my body, I'm waking up and freaking out that there's a bed bug, okay? So I'm cranky on top of the fact that I'm reaching a breaking point right now. So you can either hang with me or not. That's your free will decision whether you're gonna stick around on this channel or not. That's between you and the Lord. And let me remind you that you should be conferring with the Lord on everything instead of being led by your carnal intellect, which is the problem with most people who call themselves Christians these days. They're lukewarm, they're Laodicean in their heart posture, in their position with the Lord. I've got people who've been with me on this journey over the last year or so, or longer, and they tell me that I've built their faith. And they tell me that they appreciate my ministry. They tell me that they like how I make it okay to be imperfect, to be human. I know the path that I'm called to. I know the ministry that I'm called to. If you don't like it, get off the channel. And really, I exhort you, if you don't like it, go ask Jesus what he says. Because he's pricking your heart. He's getting to your junk. Are you going to let him have access to it? That's the question. But don't be sitting here criticizing me. Shaming me. Touch not God's anointed. Watch yourself. It's real easy to sit behind your keyboard in the comfort of whatever your life is 
and criticize and shame someone else. Especially if you're not in their shoes, if you haven't been in their position. There's a lot of people that they just want to see this fake positive show and if you don't put on some cutesy show, like, I, you know, I can't stand people like that. I can't stand those channels. Oh, hey everybody! Like every video, that's their, like, just, I can't stand people like that. Like really? When are you gonna stop being fake and be real about how life sucks in general and, and, and hey, we're in the tribulation now. Now, do I have my moments where I am truly just overflowing with the joy of the Lord? I do. You should see me. <laughs> I'll be dancing around. I'll pick up my kitty cat and we'll praise the Lord and we'll dance. And, you know, I'll have tears streaming down my face and all. But do I make it a point to um, turn on the camera in those moments? No, because I'm just naturally flowing in it. If I didn't have those moments, I don't think I'd still be standing. But I'm tired of having to defend that I do have the joy of the Lord. Unless, I guess it just keeps being proven to me that unless you really have that intimacy with the Lord yourself, you don't, people just don't comprehend the complex dichotomy that there is of like, yes, Life sucks, circumstances suck, suffering sucks, it's part of the walk, but yet you also do still have the joy of the Lord. No matter what I do, I'm always criticized. But <laughs> right now, I'm at a point where I do need to blow off a lot of steam. And so if you're going to come on here and say crap, uh, yeah, right now I feel like addressing it. I feel like addressing it because I've just had enough. I don't need your crap on top of everything else right now. I just don't. 